Sterile Processing Professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. And in this video, it's Myth Busters number three. In this series, I jump into all the myths that are around the sterile processing arena. Okay, let's jump into the next five myths. Myth number one, sterilization tape lines must be solid black. Have you ever received trays back to decontam because they never used them because the tape wasn't solid black lines? As if we don't have a ton of work and are backed up already, why not add more instruments that were unnecessary? Thanks, nursing. Look, I have gone over this with the orange locks and it is the exact same with this. This myth of needing solid black lines is bogus. The only time that ever applies is if the manufacturer IFU of that tape specifically says it must be black. Now here is an IFU from a very commonly used brand, which is Comply from 3M. The IFU says color changed from off-white or tan to dark brown or black. Is black in there? Yes. Is it the only acceptable color? No. You need to make sure that your OR is up to date with the color changes that are acceptable for your products. You might even want to do what we did in our hospital is we created a cheat sheet that showed the different things like tape, integrators, locks, all before sterilization, and then all the acceptable colors of post-sterilization that are acceptable. Then they have something right in the operating room to reference so they don't have to take a guess or when in doubt, throw it out and send it back to decontam. Myth number two, biologicals must be ran in every load. Nope. Another myth. I am even going to give a bonus myth here. And that's because another part of the myth is a bio has to be ran every day. That is also wrong. Everything must be in context, meaning the circumstances, availability, and necessity around the matter. Now, what I'm talking about right now is sterilization efficacy monitoring. I am not talking about implant loads versus non-implant loads. Here's what Amy ST79 2017 says about sterilizer efficacy monitoring with biologicals. It says within a PCD should be used weekly, preferably daily. So according to Amy, the absolute minimum is weekly. Now, however, weekly is not good practice. If you have a recall for a sterilizer load and you have to go back a week to when the biological was ran, everything since then is considered contaminated and you have a lot of patient contact to make with your uh, risk department, which is not going to be fun. So this is a good opportunity to tell you that there are standards and there is also best practice. Best practice is always safer for patient care because it is always a step above the standards. Now, if you're a decent sized sterile processing with a healthy budget and healthy operations, you should probably be doing daily at a minimum. And that is because Joint Commission is gonna actually assess your facility and see if you have the capability and the means to do it daily, and if you do, then there's no reason not to. How you should read Amy is even if they give you a couple options, it's best to lean towards the most stringent option if you have the ability to do so. And if you can't do the most stringent, it's important that you document why you can't do it and actually be able to produce some efforts of how you tried in case Joint Commission tries to talk to you about that. And last thing for the sake of clarity, any load containing an implant always, always, always requires a biological. Myth number three, you can validate sterilization or cleaning processes. No, no, no. I've seen this before and it is a big no-no. First, let's talk about the difference between validation and verification. Validation, as it's explained in Amy, is the process for which a manufacturer validates the cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization process of their medical device. This is the whole process where the medical device manufacturer has to do all this evidence with third-party labs, testing the different cleaning processes and sterilization methods, and then they submit that to the FDA in their 510K so they can market and sell their device. They validate their processes with very strict 
research and testing. The manufacturer of the product is the only one that can declare the right cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization processes for their medical device. Not you. Anything other than what they've directed, out of compliance. Even if you could validate a product by doing whatever you have within your means to do that, Joint Commission would still cite you because you're not a validator. The only thing we can do as end users is verification. The manufacturer has validated the process with evidence. Now what we can do is we can do the same process in our department and verify that it worked. For instance, the design of the tray, it should be able to be sterilized. So if we put biologicals in all the hard to reach places in that tray and we run it and the biologicals become negative, we have verified that what the manufacturer said can be achieved in our department. And this goes even a step further. So if you read chapters in Amy 13.9.2 and 13.9.4, they take it a step further and say that every new instrument you get, whether purchased, um, loaned, whatever it is, must be verified. When you get a new tray, you need to verify that when you go to sterilize it, all the different parts of that tray, biologicals are placed and all of them become negative after sterilization. And this also requires you to sterilize that tray in the most difficult portion of the sterilizer, a full load and probably right above the drain. So not only are you testing all the different parts inside the tray, you're testing it in the weakest part of the sterilizer. And if that all passes, you have officially verified the process. The more you know. Myth number four, SPD staffing should be calculated off the number of operating room cases. Oh, hell no. This is a big myth among OR leaders and executive leaders, and they just don't get it. But this is so wrong for so many reasons. But I'm gonna break it down into a very simple, easy to understand reason with by itself is enough to just completely bust this myth. Let's break it down into a comparison of two OR cases. On one hand, you have a simple inguinal hernia, which probably has one tray. On the other hand, you have a total knee arthroplasty which probably has anywhere from 10 to 15 trays. Both cases, anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, depending on your surgeons. You can always plus or minus 15, 20 minutes-ish. Now, if these both count for how much staff you should have, with the hernia, sure, that's great. We have one tray to clean. But if you have that same staff to clean 15 trays, now we have a problem. And that doesn't even count if they have dried cement on the total knee instruments. So if we establish our staffing off of the number of OR cases, we're screwed. You have to understand that all the bigger cases with all the instruments, the tons of trays per case, are the big money makers. Total knees, total hips, spine procedures, they make a lot of money. So they are gonna absolutely prioritize that they want a total knee program. They want a total hip program. They want to do spine surgeries because the hospital makes a huge profit off of those. Your staffing budget off number of OR cases, terrible, terrible idea. And lastly, myth number five, clean instruments received can go straight into the washer disinfectors. How many times have you seen clean instruments come in from a clinic because the clinic cleans their own instruments in a sink or something and a tech or even you take those instruments and put them directly in the instrument washer because you're just accepting that they're clean. I've seen this as well for loaner trays. Loaner trays come in and they just assume, well, the last SPD department cleaned them, so they should be clean. So we can just throw them in the washer disinfector. Now, if you're depending on another non-trained worker like a clinic tech to clean those instruments correctly using the right enzymatics or detergents, then you might as well give your job away. Because what you're saying to your teammates is anybody can do our job, it's fine. And you're basically saying that you're easily replaceable. And the fact is, if that is your work ethic, then yeah, you're definitely replaceable. And for the rest of the techs who are doing the right thing, no, they are not easily replaceable. If you've ever lost a tech with significant years of experience or even a tech that has five years experience that is doing all these specialties, 
When you lose that tech, there is a huge consequence to the department. Don't cut corners, do the right thing. I wanna thank you for joining me on this third episode of SPD Myth Busting. Any topics or videos you wanna see, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.